So I've just talked to the church warden to collect the keys to the church and we're just going to do a quick walk around the outside to look for any loose tiles, other potential roosting features before we head inside and then set up for the bat survey. The local church group are looking at repairing the roof and getting some of the tiles replaced uh, and any bats that might potentially be roosting in there could be disturbed or destroyed. So we're going to do a survey to see what use they're making of the site if there are any bats. I'm going to assess the interior of the church for any signs of bats. So a bat was seen in here about a year ago. Uh, it came in and kind of flew around while they were doing a service. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there's a bat currently using the space because they are seasonal. Um, and so I'm going to have a look around, see if I can find evidence of bats. So either it could be a bat itself clinging to its roost, or I could look for evidence like bat droppings, disturbed cobwebs, things like that. So we're just going to have a look, brief look around. Spots under potential access areas for anywhere that might be bat droppings. So there definitely are bats that make use of this occasionally. We don't know where in the structure or how frequently. It's not anything that These spaces, often at ground level, will be swept, so you lose evidence. So stuck to the wall is much more likely. So I've just had a look around and I've seen something suspicious on the wall over here. Uh, can you see there? There's some kind of droppings that may have come down from the space here, fallen against the wall and gotten stuck, and rolled down. And here again, a bit lower, uh, there's some, what I suspect to be some bad droppings. So what I'll do is I'll take a sample of them, and then we can send this off to the lab for analysis. So what I'm using is a laser rangefinder to measure space and that will help me get the dimensions of the space to then list in my report. So I'm going to walk around the outside of the structure and just visually assess it for any potential roosting features. So the kind of thing I'm looking for is raised tiles or for instance up here we've got some raised roof tiles and some lead flashing which has a little bit of a gap under it. And common pipistrels which are about the size of a thumb and soprano pipistrels can fit into those really small gaps and they're called crevice dwelling bats because they can dwell in crevices. Uh, but then we also get much larger void dwelling bats like the brown long eards. Those require a much larger kind of a letterbox sized gap in the structure to get into. Uh, and this structure here, the roof's in quite poor repair which is why the work's been done in the first place they're going to get repairs done to the roof. Uh, and that means there's quite a lot of gaps. So under the ridge line there you can see loose mortar that's just fallen out. Uh, crevice dweller bats absolutely love that and they get in under there. And then I can see just from here I can see at least 20 loose tiles. So if, when I'm writing out the report for this it's going to have a high habitat value for bats. So I've just found a gap under the soffit here. It's a very large gap here just as the, the mortar is torn away. And these kind of cracks are great for bats to get into. And What I found here on the east side is two really massive gaps in the slate tiling on the roof uh, and these are both perfect spaces for bats to get into the roof structure and then live between the roof tiling and the roof lining. Uh, so these might we might expect bats at dawn or dusk to be coming in and going out uh, of these gaps. So when it comes a bit later, when it gets a bit dark and we come back to do our dusk emergence survey, I definitely want to put a surveyor on this side to then keep watch specifically on these two gaps in the roof here and we might expect and hopefully if we get lucky we might see some bats coming to and fro. So I've completed the preliminary roost assessment of the site and given the number of missing tiles we think it's a high habitat value for bats. What this means is they'll need three dusk and dawn emergence surveys, at least one at dusk, at least one at dawn, using four surveyors to cover every angle of the building uh, and they'll need this in order to get their planning permission. So those are the recommendations I'll make to them in my report.